So you would love to start taking more conscious control over your emotions and to develop your emotional mastery skills, but you're not quite sure where to begin. If so, you're in luck because in today's video, we're going to talk about four very simple steps that you can start taking today to get yourself moving in the right direction. So these are the same steps that I followed myself when I was starting to develop my emotional mastery skills. And there's still things that I use to this day because they're still helpful. So what I've done is pull together a few things that help to create a foundation for emotional mastery and put them into a kind of simple framework that you can start using today. Now, this framework will allow you to not only change your emotional state and take control of your emotions in the moment, but also to guide your overall emotional path in life so that you can feel the emotions that you want to feel more consistently over a longer period of time. So these steps are quite simple, but they're very powerful. They're definitely the best place to start. And they're also actions that you will use over and over again throughout your emotional mastery journey. So this is stuff that you definitely don't want to miss out on. My name is AJ Lester from UnleashAwesome.com. Stick around and we'll get stuck into it. All right, so the first step I've actually called step zero. And the step is to increase your emotional understanding. And the reason that I've called it step zero is because not everyone is going to need to do this. And so if you find that you're the sort of person that doesn't need to do this, then feel free to skip straight through to the next step, which we will call step one. Now, basically what we're talking about in this step is to develop your understanding of emotions in general. So all the different kinds of emotions that it's actually possible for a human being such as yourself to feel. So a lot of people, women in particular, may already have a very solid understanding of all the different types of emotions that there are to feel. They're very in touch with their own emotions. They're in touch with other people's emotions. And this step won't be necessary. If so, please feel free to skip ahead. But for other people, they may not be as in touch with their own emotions. They may not be as familiar with recognizing other people's emotions, in which case it's very beneficial to develop more of an understanding of emotions in general before proceeding to other steps in emotional mastery. So if you are the sort of person that does need to develop your understanding of emotions in general, what I recommend is going to Google and typing in list of emotions and then click on images. And when you do that, you'll see a whole bunch of images that come up that have lists of different types of emotions. Now, what you'll find is there are some simple lists and there are some very complicated lists. I recommend opening one or two of the simpler lists because the complicated ones are very complicated and comprehensive and they can be a bit overwhelming. So the simpler lists will give you a basic overview of the main types of emotions that humans might feel on a regular basis. And just go and have a look through this list and see if you can recognize the different emotions that it lists and to relate to whether you've actually felt them before or you know of other people that have felt them in different situations. Can you describe these emotions and what they're like? And if there are any that you don't understand very well, then do what it takes to develop your understanding of those emotions. So uh, look up the definition, have a chat with people, see if you can find examples in real life, maybe or on TV or movies or whatever, where these emotions are being displayed so that you are better able to recognize these emotions and understand them. So once you have a better understanding of the different kinds of emotions that it's possible to feel, you'll have a better foundation for understanding yourself and your own emotions more, which is basically one of the foundations of emotional mastery in itself. So if you need to develop your understanding of emotions, go through those lists and you may also want to, when you're doing that, visualize or mentally rehearse what some of these emotions might feel like if you've never felt them before. Or you can think back to times in the past where that may have been the emotion that you felt, but you just didn't realize it at the time. So the more you can actually get in touch with what these emotions are and how they feel, the better foundation you'll have for everything that's to follow in, in the field of emotional mastery. All right, so I've drawn this step of increasing your emotional awareness as kind of an overarching step in the framework that we're going to talk about because it really lays the foundation for everything else we're going to do. Once you have a pretty solid understanding of emotions in general, it's then time to have a look at the emotions that we feel specifically. And so the next step, which I've called step one, is to develop your emotional awareness. So awareness is always the first key to change. It's very difficult to change something if you're not aware of it. And usually if that happens, it's just by fluke and it's not something that we're doing in a way where we're really conscious and really focused on getting the exact sort of change that we want. So 
what we need to do as this very first step once we've got our understanding is to develop the awareness of the emotions that we feel. And we're looking at developing our awareness of the emotions that we feel in two areas. One is the emotions that we feel on a consistent or regular basis over a period of time, which is sort of our general emotional path, as well as having a look at the emotions that we feel in any particular moment. So by looking at the emotions that we feel on a consistent basis, we get a feeling or a, a picture of what our emotional life is like in general. Do we generally feel positive emotions and are we on a pretty good emotional ride that we're really enjoying? Or are we consistently feeling a lot of negative emotions and this kind of emotional path is making life unpleasant and taking away from quality of life? So. By doing that, we sort of look at the bigger picture and then by looking at and being aware of the emotions that we're feeling in the moment, that's where we can take more conscious control of what we're feeling as we're feeling it and then start taking actions to shift our emotional state if that's what we want to uh, do so we can feel more of the emotions that we want to feel. So as part of this step, we're going to cover awareness in both of these two areas. Okay, so in developing our emotional awareness, the place that we're going to start to begin with is to have a look at the emotions that you feel over the longer, a longer period of time. So the reason we're gonna start here is because by looking at the emotions that we have typically felt in the past to date, it'll give us a little bit more information that will help us to then identify the specific emotions that we might feel in the moment. Because for most people, there's not very much variation in the kinds of emotions that they feel over time. So if you consistently feel certain sorts of emotions, there's a good chance that if you're looking at your emotions in the moment, that it'll be an emotion that you've already felt before. Having said that, using the skills that we're going to develop in emotional mastery, we'll have more ability to actually introduce new emotions into our life that we've never felt before, and therefore create a life that is more emotionally rich. But before we get to that stage, let's have a look at the emotions that we have felt in the past, typically up until this point. So to do that, we wanna take a bit of a, a snapshot. So if you skip the previous step, what I was saying is it's important for people to develop their understanding. And one way to develop that understanding is to have a look at a couple of lists of emotions that you can get off Google and just to go through them, get some understanding. These same lists that I recommended people use for that step can also be used in this step. So what would be a good idea is for you to grab a couple of these lists. Once again, probably the simpler lists rather than the more complicated ones would be better to avoid getting overwhelmed and just use them as a bit of a guide and go through all the different emotions that they list in these lists and identify the emotions that you have felt fairly regularly over say the last week or two. And you can sort of break them into the emotions that you consider to be positive and the emotions that you might consider to be negative or unpleasant. And once you've done that, have a look a little bit further back into your past and think about the emotions that you might have felt um, fairly regularly over a longer period of time. So maybe the last year or so. So can you think of certain things that have happened to you over the last year or so that have caused you to feel certain sorts of emotions consistently? And if so, make a note of those as well. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be completely exhaustive or comprehensive. What we really want to do is just get a good picture of the sorts of emotions that you feel fairly regularly, uh, starting with the things that you can remember most recently in the last couple of weeks, and then looking a little bit further afield over the last few months or year. Now, once you have that picture, we'll be all set for having a look and being a bit more in tune with our emotions in the moment. So just to give an example, I have done this exercise myself and I've got on my tablet here a list of the emotions that I have felt recently as well as over the last year or so. So I broke it down into a couple of categories. So I've put down the positive emotions that I feel uh, frequently and they were happy, loved, loving, adored, affectionate, playful, jovial, cheerful, curious, enthusiastic, passionate, inspired, motivated, determined, confident, grateful, appreciative, and satisfied. Then when I had a look, there were other emotions that I have felt in recent times, but not anywhere near as frequently. Uh, and those have been things like excited, appreciated, joyful, uplifted, invigorated, compassionate, optimistic, hopeful, pleased, glad, fascinated, peaceful, proud, relieved, reassured, impressed, and fulfilled. So those were all the kind of positive emotions that I could identify as having felt 
in the, the recent times. In terms of negative emotions, the ones that I identify that I feel most frequently are overwhelmed, stressed, worried, anxious, irritable, agitated, impatient, frustrated, disappointed, disdainful, and mistrustful. And the emotions that I have felt are less regularly but still can identify with feeling over the last year or so are fearful, regretful, doubtful, guilty, angry, annoyed, grumpy, antsy, hurt, incredulous, self-conscious, nervous, resistant, hesitant, reserved, shy, lonely, and flat. So these are emotions that in some cases I have managed to um, control in certain ways and make improvements to my emotional life. And there are also emotions in there that I'm still working on um, taking more control over and, and replacing with other more positive emotions. So I know that was a long list, uh, but I really want to show you that this is stuff that I have used myself. So I just wanted to share that with you. So you had a bit of a picture about myself and I would love for you to share about your emotional situation as well in the comments and we'll talk about that soon. Okay, so the next part of this step of developing your emotional awareness is to look at the emotions that you feel in the moment. So by having a look at the emotions that you feel over the longer term, that will give you a better idea of the kinds of emotions that you do feel consistently and it will help you to identify what you might be feeling in the moment. And your awareness of what you're feeling in the moment is basically looking at what emotions you're actually currently feeling as well as also being aware of any changes in emotions as they happen. Now, the way that I recommend developing your awareness is basically to put your focus on your emotions throughout the day. So this essentially comes down to mindfulness and being mindful of your current emotional state. And one of the best ways to do that is simply to just check in regularly throughout the day and see how you're feeling. And once again, this obviously relies on having a solid emotional understanding in the first place, and it can be helped by knowing what you do feel on a more regular basis. Now, it's not always easy to remember to just check in and see what emotions you're feeling at any particular time of the day, unless you have reminders. So what I want to go through were a couple of strategies that you can use to remind yourself to check in so that throughout the day, you do get a better picture of the sorts of emotions that you felt, which can then be put together to create a bigger picture of the sort of emotions that you feel over a longer period of time. So I'm just going to have a look at some things that I wrote down here. So basically some practical tools are to set reminders. So one thing that you can do if you work at a computer throughout the day, you can actually obviously set a timer so that uh, it goes off. And I recommend maybe an interval of about an hour at you know once per hour throughout most of the day while you're working at your computer, then you can just check in quickly and see how what your emotions are like at that particular time. Uh, another thing you can do is obviously you can set an alarm on your phone and you can usually set these alarms up so that they can um, just vibrate the phone on silent rather than actually sounding an audible alarm if you don't want to disturb people. I have also in the past as a way to remind myself to check in, I've just used a little um, gym timer that clips onto my belt like a gym boss. And I once again set that up to vibrate so that only I can feel that and other people aren't aware. But when I do feel that vibration, that is my reminder just to check in and see how I'm doing. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, another thing that I heard recommended was, was to use the notifications on your phone as a reminder to be mindful of whatever you want to be mindful of. And in this case, it's being mindful of our emotions. So a lot of people have phones that are set up with all sorts of notifications enabled when they get a Facebook comment or like or something on Snapchat or obviously messages and phone calls and that sort of thing. So you can use this normally distracting device to actually give you a reminder to be mindful. So before you just pick up the phone and have a look at the latest comment that someone put on your status update, that actual notification can be used as a reminder to check in first before you go about the thing that you're going to do on your phone. So if this is coming up throughout your day, it can actually be a pretty reliable way to remind you to check in on your emotions. Uh, another thing that you can do is to put little reminders in your environment. So you could put little notes in places or little objects that remind you to check in. One problem that I found with that though is that if you leave these things in one place for too long, they eventually just become part of the furniture and your brain filters them out and you, they don't actually serve as that reminder. So if you are going to use objects in your environment as a reminder, 
To make them more effective, I recommend moving them around or changing them pretty frequently so that they do actually look like something new that your brain is going to pick up and use as a reminder. Uh, another thing that you can do is establish reminders due or that are related to certain actions that you might take. So for example, walking through a particular doorway or walking through any doorway at all. Uh, maybe it's sitting down to a seat that you regularly sit down to or standing up from that seat, getting into or out of the car, going to the toilet. These are all times where you might actually, you know, normally not be thinking about it, but if you actually focus your attention on using that as a reminder, every time you perform that action throughout the day, it can also be a signal for you to check in and see how your emotions are going. Uh, aside from reminders, you can also build your awareness of your emotion in, or your emotions in the, the current moment in other ways. So one example would be if you have any kind of idle time, maybe you're just sitting in your car at the lights or you're waiting for a friend or you're waiting in a queue somewhere, instead of just you know picking up your phone if it's safe to do so, um, you can actually stop and just use that time to reflect on your current emotions and how you're feeling. Um, when anything new happens, just like with the phone, instead of just immediately reacting to the new thing that's happened, just take a moment to pause and reflect on the emotions that might have come up for you as a result of that new thing that's just happened. Another thing you can do is at the end of each day, you can have a debrief on your day. So you might just do some personal reflection where you have a think about the day, the things that happened, the sorts of emotions that you experienced, or you could also have a chat with a friend and just unload and have a debrief and just tell them about the things that happened for you and also the way that you felt because the more you can actually identify and describe the way you felt as a result of different things that happened throughout the day, the more you can actually be, develop your awareness of your emotions. And if you are encountering emotions that are coming up for you as a result of um, situations and the, these emotions are things that you don't like, obviously this awareness can allow you to change them so that you can actually generate the right emotions that you want to feel internally rather than them just coming up as a result of something that's happened and being emotions that you don't really want. Okay. Now, one thing I should mention also is if you do check in on your emotions consistently enough and you have, say, reminders or other things that are prompting you to check in on your emotions, eventually you'll notice that you don't need the reminders so much over time because you will check in on your emotions more automatically and more instinctively. So if you do this consistently for a few days or a week or two or something like that, you'll find that these reminders aren't as important. Now, obviously, if you stop checking in on your emotions and you don't have these reminders, if you, if you haven't checked in on your emotions for a while, it will be the opposite. So you will decondition yourself and you'll stop being so mindful of your emotions and that awareness will go away. And then you'll probably have to start again by reminding yourself to check in with your emotions. So a couple of other points that I wanted to make is that your awareness can also then be magnified if you do a couple of other things. And some examples are basically just tracking your emotions throughout the day and throughout the week. So you could use an Excel spreadsheet where you basically just have the time and a quick description or even one or two words about the current emotions that you're feeling. Or you could even do this with a Word document. Um, you can use an app and there are plenty of different um, apps that are out there, whether they're emotional apps or more general apps that you can use to actually track your mood and get a picture of how your mood changes throughout the day, which obviously increases your awareness. Uh, and you can also journal, which is obviously a very powerful technique for a lot of reasons and will help you to achieve a lot of other things as well. But if you include your emotions uh, that you felt throughout the day when you are journaling, that can bring more awareness to what you're doing as well. Now, when you are checking in on your emotions, it's as a very minimum, it's good to just identify what emotions that you're feeling. But if you want to go into a little bit more depth, you can also look at, you know, what does that feel like? Is it pleasant? Is it unpleasant? Is there a physical sensation that goes with that emotion? So are you actually feeling it in your chest if it's some sort of stress or, or embarrassment or something like that? Do you feel it in your heart? Do you feel it in your stomach? If it's um, excitement, same sort of thing, you know, do you have butterflies somewhere? So are you actually feeling a, a physical sensation with that? You can also have a look at why do you think that you're feeling that emotion? Was there actually something that happened, some sort of event or something that happened in the environment that you believe triggered that emotion? So by having a look at this and also, sorry, one other thing that I should mention is have a look at what you think that emotion means and what the emotion is actually trying to signal to you because all emotions are actually meant to be signals to us. 
And if we pay attention to them, we can actually take actions that will benefit us. So uh, all of these things, if we actually have a closer look at the emotions that we're feeling, and maybe not every single time you check in, but if you're feeling some sort of significant emotion, that additional understanding will help you with your awareness and also everything else that we want to do in terms of emotional mastery. So this awareness is basically the first step once you have the understanding of emotions in general, it's the first step towards your own emotional mastery. And with that in mind, it will set the stage for the next step to follow. So what I'm going to do to avoid this video being too long, I'm just going to split this video into two parts. So we're going to cover the four steps across two different videos. We're going to end this first video here. And at this point, I would love for you to take action on the things that we've already talked about regarding building your emotional understanding if you, that's what you need to do, and also to develop your awareness. So as a step that you can take straight away, you can actually start having a look at the emotions that you have felt in the recent weeks and also over the past year or so, and just take stock of where you're at emotionally in terms of what's happened for you so far. So with that in mind, once you've taken that action, I would love for you to share. I would like to be transparent with you and I would love for you guys to share a little bit about yourselves as well. So if you are happy to, I would love for you to maybe share three emotions that are positive that you feel on a regular basis, as well as three emotions that are not so positive, maybe they're negative or unpleasant or uncomfortable that you also feel on a regular basis. And maybe just drop those into the comments. And if we share, we can get a picture of um, what's going on for each person. And like I said, my dream would be for us all to help and support each other. So by sharing a little bit about ourselves, maybe we can all help each other on this journey. So leave your answers in the comments and I will see you in the next video.